Hi, my name is Dr. Heather Kirk Ballard. I am the Consumer Horticulture Extension Specialist for the state. I work, work with the LSU Ag Center. I'm also a assistant professor in the School of Plant and Environmental Soil Sciences. And today I was asked to talk to you all about herbs um, as part of your gardening certificate program. Uh, I've had some previous experience with botanical extracts, looking at them and mitigating type two diabetes through the Pennington Biomedical Botanical Center. And I'm also working with LSU to create a medicinal plant certificate program. So I'm very excited about that. And this is just one of my passions. So they asked me to speak about it. Now, let's start off with a definition of what an herb is. Now, botanically speaking, an herb is a seed producing annual, biennial, or perennial. Now y'all should have talked about that already. Um, it does not develop persistent woody tissue, that's why it's called an herb, and it dies down at the end of a growing season. Um, but herbs are also a plant or part of a plant that is valued for its medicinal, savory, or aromatic qualities, um, things such as parsley, basil, and rosemary. So these are types of herbs that you're all familiar with. Now let's go over a few uh, uses of herbs in more detail. Most of us are familiar with using herbs uh, in cooking to flavor our food. They're also used as a garnish on our plate to just make it look more presentable and, and more aesthetically pleasing. Um, herbs can also be used in bouquets for their fragrance. Uh, one thing that I think of is chamomile. It's a beautiful flower that is an herb that's white and yellow. Can be used in a bouquet, but it can also be made into an herbal tea. Um, which leads me to herbal teas. And uh, for example here, I brought a few of things from my uh, office. This is a plantation mint. Mint is obviously an herb. Um, this is a mushroom turmeric, and this is a chai French vanilla uh, tea. So we use herbs a lot of time for herbal teas. They're also used to make essential oils. Essential oils like these, ones that we use um, for aromatherapy that has become very popular. Uh, they're used to scent lotions like this here, um, patchouli. This one has eucalyptus and spearmint. So we use those essential oils and we can't forget about lavender ladies. We all love the lavender, right? It's so soothing. Um, so we add those to our perfumes and our lotions, but plants um, and herbs are also used to make cleaning products. Um, you're seeing a lot of those plant-derived and plant-based cleaning products on the shelf now because they're a lot more user-friendly and a lot environmentally uh, more friendly. And then um, you can use essential oils for pesticides. Uh, we have some that we use for commercial use. It's a lot more um, friendly to the environment. There's things like Essentria IC3 that's comprised of rosemary oil, peppermint oil, wintergreen oil, and you've all heard of neem oil. We use these as insecticides, uh, organic insecticides. So those are all derived from essential oils. And then um, we also look at plant-derived oils for uh, antifungal and antimicrobial properties. So right now, myself, uh, Dr. Zijing Liu and Dr. Raj Singh, who is our plant pathologist here at the LSU Ag Center, we're looking at some extracts uh, that will help prevent or mitigate fungal diseases um, in vegetable seedling transplants. So we're looking at that. And then of course, there are the medicinal uses of plant extracts. Um, a lot of chemotherapeutic drugs are derived from plants. Um, digitoxin is a heart medication that is made from foxglove. Then uh, metformin is the most prescribed uh, anti-diabetic drug, according to the World Health Organization. And that one is derived from French lilac. So um, when we're talking about medicinal plants in this arena, it's not to give medical advice, it's more just to talk about the history of plants, um, herbs, and essential oils as they've been used in medicine. So more of a history of plants. Now the Egyptians have used medicinal plants since 4500 BC, and Eastern medicine has utilized plants since 2600 BC. In India, Ay Ayurveda medicine has been practiced for over 3000 years, and plants have been used as, medicine, as medicines 
throughout the world since the earliest recorded history. So in the US, our earliest recorded history has, was with Native Americans in the 1600s, and they shared that information with settlers of America. And then the native plants of Louisiana were also used as medicine by the locals, the Cajun, the Creole, African Americans, and Native Americans. So we have been using plants for medicine since the dawn of age. Now, why do we use plants? Plants are chemical warriors. They protect themselves by producing chemicals. These are called secondary metabolites. You know, when we're threatened by danger as humans, we can run away from the danger. However, plants cannot, so they defend themselves. You can think of something like poisonous sumac or poisonous ivy, poison ivy. This is how plants protect themselves. However, they make it very interesting for us as humans to look at them for med medicinal purposes. Now, some of those secondary metabolites are alkaloids. Probably the number one most known alkaloid that you all are familiar with is uh, coffee, right? So caffeine is an alkaloid from the coffee plant and it's a stimulant of the central nervous system. Um, also some teas made from yerba mate, which are high in uh, caffeine, are made from plants. And you can think of tea plants that also have caffeine. So those are alkaloids and they, they are central nervous system stimulants. There are also terpenoids, tannins, phenols, saponoids, catechins. You may not have heard of all of those, but these are the types of chemicals that we're looking at for medicinal properties. Um, there's been plenty of research in coneflower, which is uh, called echinacea. People are using that for colds and for the flu. Elderberry is being used uh, to shorten the duration of the flu. Also, research has shown that it can shorten the, um, the life of H1N1 and, hey, possibly COVID-19. There will be lots of studies in medicinal plants as a mitigator of those types of diseases or you know, to, to lessen the uh, severity of those diseases. Ginkgo biloba, many people have heard of, uh, is from the ginkgo biloba tree, and people take that for memory. Um, but in the United States, there are only two FDA-approved botanical drugs. There is lots of research going on, um, especially at, like I said, the Botanical Research Center at Pennington here in Baton Rouge. Uh, as part of my, uh, my dissertation project, I worked on Russian tarragon. So we all know that as an herb, we've heard of tarragon. We looked at an extract to help improve insulin signaling in uh, type two diabetic models. So it's very exciting research and that's continuing to go on. We will continue as scientists to look at um, plants for their medicinal properties. Um, and for all these other properties we've discussed, um, so let's talk about more about where herbs thrive. Now, you can grow herbs indoors, but most, most herbs love to be in a sunny area. Um, you wanna plant herbs in full to partial sun, that's the recommended, um, especially in herbs that we want to bloom. Blooming herbs just love the sun. Some of those are basil, bergamot, borage, Feverfew, germander, oregano, rosemary, sage, and yarrow. But there are some uh, herbs that can tolerate shade and they include rosemary, oregano, marjoram, catnip, patchouli, comfrey, and lovage. So um, remember that these types of herbs will not bloom because they're in shadier areas. Now you can also use herbs, um, we, we talk about for cooking, oftentimes when herbs bloom, they will stop their foliage production. So if you need the foliage for cooking, um, you want to be sure that you pinch blooms off. Now, it's great to have those blooms around. They attract pollinators. So a lot of people in their vegetable gardens will actually incorporate herbs and let them go to flower uh, so that they can pull in pollinators that will help with their vegetable production. So that's always a good idea. Now, herbs do great in containers on sunny patios. They can also be, some can be grown indoors in a very sunny location in your home. Now in the house, we're not gonna water as often because the plants um, are not transpiring as much as those that are outdoors exposed to heat. 
So um, you don't want to overwater. That's a common um, issue with house plants and uh, herbs grown indoor in general is overwatering. But um, herbs, herbs can be a wonderful addition to the garden. Um, they, you know, you are gonna go over in detail. This is going to be your guide for this portion of the, um, of the learning class. This is publication 3721. Um, herb gardening in Louisiana, and it will cover quite a bit of information. Uh, well, it'll go over the uses of herbs again, soil preparation, cultivation, um, how you want to fertilize your herbs, irrigation, the places where they should be grown in shade versus sun, um, and what have you. So this will be a good guide for you all. You want to make sure that you. Uh, just like any plants, they're getting proper fertilization and irrigation, and that we're maintaining those beds without weed or disease um, and insect pressure. So we wanna make sure to keep an eye on that by using mulch. Um, there are some diseases that are associated, uh, downy mildew, powdery mildew, leaf spot and blight can be a, an issue in herbs, um, but there are treatments that are available um, in this guide. And we want to stick to organics, especially on our edibles and herbs, because um, we're going to eat these. So you want to use more of an organic pesticide or, or any chemicals that you use in the garden with these. But what's also great about these, um, they give some little recipes uh, on how to make herbal candles that just smell great. Uh, there's also a mint sun iced tea recipe here, then we have um, cinnamon cookies. So, so just think about all those herbs. And, and what else is great about this publication is that they provide photos of each of the herbs that can help I, you help you identify them. They tell you in what season they're most productive because we know that plants, um, some plants are more tolerant of heat and other plants are more tolerant of cool weather. So we need to be aware of what we're planting and, and what season that we are planting so that our uh, herbs will be the most healthy. So you can use these, you can actually cut these little cards out, you can laminate them, you can use them, put them in your herb garden so that you can label all your plants. It will tell you what season that they are growing in and the height and width and the spacing and all the pertinent information that you need for producing the best herb garden. Um, so why don't we walk over to the garden now and, and look at a few herbs. So here's an example of a raised bed. Uh, we have basil and mint mostly in this bed. And as you can see, they have gone to flower. Not only are they pretty, but if you take notice, there are pollinators all over this. Lots of honeybees actually. So if you want your plants to stay in a vegetative state, like this basil here, where we see the nice large leaves, then what you want to do is pinch back the flowers well before they get this tall, okay? Just when you see them starting to come out, you wanna pinch those off so that you'll keep it in a vegetative state. Now, if you wanna pull in pollinators, go ahead, let them flower, enjoy the beautiful flowers, enjoy the pollinators, and uh, you can actually save the seed for planting next year. Here we have an example of Mexican tarragon. I spoke previously about Russian tarragon. These are related. They're both Artemisia plants and they have that licorice smell, very unique to Artemisia. Here we have an example of lemongrass, often used in Asian cuisine, added to soups and uh, all sorts of different things, but homeowners also grow this in their yard because it is thought to deter insects such as mosquitoes. All right, and here we have a bed of mostly thymes and rosemary. Now thymes are one of the mounding ground cover type herbs that you can use as a low growing. There's also a trailing rosemary. And remember both thyme and rosemary essential oils have been used as insecticides. So as you can see, herbs are very versatile. They can be used in cooking for medicine. They can be grown on patios, in containers, or out in a garden, but they're a whole lot of fun and very easy to do.